Hi, I'm Tim. I'm the producer here at Become New. Before we get into the episode for today, I wanted to give you one more reminder that this Saturday, November 4th at 7 p.m. in San Jose, California, will be our first ever in-person gathering. We are super excited about it. We hope that you can join us. If you plan to attend, we need you to RSVP so that we can anticipate how many folks will be there. And when you RSVP, you'll be provided with the venue information so you know where to go. You can do that at our website, becomenew.com slash featured. There you'll find a little button that says RSVP and that will get you where you need to go. So we hope to see you on Saturday. We can't wait. Now here's John. We live in a hurting world. We have all been hurt and we all inflict hurt. Hurt is natural, forgiveness is supernatural. And so we're on a journey to forgive. And I wanna to talk to you today about maybe the hardest piece of forgiveness that you will have to do. I know for me, this is one of the hardest people that I have to forgive, and that's me. When I think about Things that I have done, for me, it's especially when it comes to being a parent. Um, ways that I have handled anger. Ways that I didn't show courage or love. Very concrete things that I have said. Or when I wasn't present and that, that I did not say. And then also as a pastor at a church, uh, it's very hard to live with those things and not be overwhelmed with a sense of shame or remorse. And I know, I, I know I love so many of you and I know uh, how crippling that voice is that comes sometimes at two or three in the morning of what you have done wrong that feels like this crushing weight that you can never forgive. Loose me, so this is what we're going to do, and today may be your day. Loose means writes this in his book on forgiveness. He's got a chapter just called Forgiving Ourselves. Do you dare release the person you are today from the shadow of the wrong you did yesterday? Do you dare forgive yourself? And I think that it may be a reflection of how hard it is for us to forgive ourselves that the Bible uses so many different images to talk about the fact that God forgives us. First John 1, 9 is a verse you might want to just hang on to today. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So that's one picture of forgiving and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So that's another image, to be cleaned, because there's something inside us that feels stained. Or from the Day of the Atonement, the picture of covering our sin, like the blood that is sprinkled over the mercy seat to cover it, or that wonderful book from Micah, verse from Micah that I remember in this setting, that God has hurled our sins into the sea. The sea in the ancient world was the abyss, the place of chaos, the place of uncreation. It's like our sin through the grace of God is being uncreated. Or in Isaiah 53, where it talks about with his stripes, we are healed. He heals us from our sin, or he nails our sin to the cross, or he does not charge it against us. That word indictment is a big word in our days. Pardon is another one that we think about, that he has pardoned us. But especially I want you to think about this one. Um, uh, Paul says to the church at Rome, therefore there is now no condemnation. And if you struggle with self-forgiveness, I almost guarantee that what you, I know for me, what I struggle with is self-condemnation. And Paul says, now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In the Gospel of John, John chapter 3, verse 17, it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world. And it's very important to distinguish between um, self-reproach or regret, pain over the wrong thing that I have done. It's not bad. Actually, uh, people who cannot experience self-reproach, pain over what they've done wrong, are um, psychopaths. So it's good that you're not a psychopath. Uh, pain over what you have done uh, is a very good thing. Self-condemnation is something else. And in self-condemnation, again, part of what we're learning in the journey of forgiveness 
is the terribly destructive power of rumination. And self-condemnation is when I ruminate over what it is that I have done wrong in ways that are destructive, that rob me of life, that rob me of the courage to move forward. Uh, one of the contrasts in the New Testament that you might want to think about are two people who did great wrongs and suffered great self-reproach, Peter and Judas. And we're told after Peter denied Jesus three times, he heard a cock crow and he remembered Jesus said, by the time the rooster crows in the morning three times, you will have denied me. And he wept bitterly. He repented, he felt great pain. And it would take a great deal of courage for Peter to move forward with his life and receive forgiveness from Jesus and be able to forgive himself. I think those are closely related. I receive God's forgiveness and forgive myself. I cease to self-condemn. William Barclay writes, we don't know, but there's a tradition that says that for the rest of Peter's life in ministry, when he would preach, sometimes if somebody wanted to inflict pain on him, they would crow like a rooster as a way of reminding him, you are the one who denied your Lord. And I expect Peter, every time he heard that sound, he remembered again and there would be pain. But see, that pain can have a purpose in self-forgiveness and forgiving myself, it's not that I never experience self-reproach. It is that I am not overwhelmed by self-reproach. I am not controlled or in the grip of self-reproach anymore. And I'm able to use it to remember uh, I am no longer that person. And I can actually um, live in the humility of knowing I'm one whose sins have been forgiven and I can help other people experience that. Now the contrast here is the character of Judas. And Judas also let Jesus down. He betrayed Jesus. We're told in Matthew 27 that when Jesus was headed to the cross, when Judas realized what he had done, he repented um, and he returned the silver to the religious leaders. And he said, uh, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But then he hanged himself and despair ultimately triumphed in his life and he did not have the courage to go forward it is kind of remarkable to think if judas um what took the pain that uh, he experienced as somebody who had betrayed jesus if he could have brought that to jesus if he could have brought that to god and moved forward and been reconciled with his other disciples the way that peter was what an amazing triumph of grace that might have been but he did not and it's generally understood, uh, like if you ever read Dante, the Divine Comedy, Judas as a traitor is in the lowest level of hell. You should know there is a minority opinion on this. My old Greek professor, Jerry Hawthorne, used to say, because the New Testament uses a quite specific word for repenting or changing one's mind of Judas, that, that it's possible, Jerry would say, that Judas recognized what he had done wrong and did repent of it. And although ending his life was not the best way to express it, uh, Jerry thinks that old Judas himself ended up being forgiven by God. So now, this may be your day if you have been living with self-condemnation. There is now, therefore, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So what do we do to go about forgiving ourselves? Well, for one thing, timing is real important. And just like when somebody hurts me real deeply, I can't just glibly say it's all over. I have to recognize there's the decision to forgive, but then emotional forgiveness, and there's a journey there. I have to do that with myself as well. It is a journey. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Shawshank Redemption, after many, many years in prison, they ask Red, uh, are you rehabilitated? And he says, I don't think I know what that word means. And the guy who's interviewing him says, well, it means you've paid your debt to your society. He says, I know, I, I know what you think it means, Sonny, but to me, it's just a politician's word. What do you really want to know? Am I sorry for what I did? Are you? Not a day goes by that I don't regret what I've done. Not because I'm in here. Not because you think I should. When I think of the way that I was, the stupid young man who committed that terrible crime, I want to talk to him talk sense to him 
And you realize what has happened to Red over a period of time as he has been in that place is he is no longer the same person that he was who committed that terrible crime. We've talked before about crime and punishment. The central character, Raskolnikov, who goes on a long journey, commits this terrible crime of murdering an old woman, a pawnbroker, and at first doesn't want to feel guilty and eventually does. How it happens, he does not know. But finally, after many, many years, he is able to receive grace from God and he is no longer the same person who has done that. Now, part of what it means is I have to be really honest about what I have done. Self-forgiveness without repentance would not be a good thing, would just be kind of a charade. And uh, I cannot forgive myself for the person that I am. As a person, you know, sometimes we want to do that. I'm not pretty enough or smart enough or successful enough. Well, there I need to be uh, accepted. Um, forgiveness must be for this. I yelled at my child. I lied. I betrayed. I was unfaithful to my spouse. I killed somebody. I stole this. That can be forgiven. And then uh, I make a decision to forgive myself and I make a decision, a commitment. I will no longer live in rumination over what I have done wrong. And when that thought, when that memory comes again and it haunts me, I'll recognize the pain is there. My primary goal is not to avoid that pain anymore, but I will not ruminate over it. I will remember if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive. And then here's kind of the capstone of it. I will love. I will use the memory of both my wrongdoing and the fact that God forgives me. Now again, part of what I can feel like is, well, uh, if what I did wasn't so bad, if I can find some way to justify it or excuse it, then it would be okay. No, no, no. I need forgiveness. What I have done is inexcusable, but it is not unforgivable. What you have done is not unforgivable. And there is that wonderful story in Luke chapter 7 where there is a certain woman in a town. She is a sinner and she shows up at the banquet because she knows Jesus is a forgiver. And she weeps and she uh, cleanses Jesus' feet with her tears, and dries them with her hair. And the Pharisee who is there is quite upset about this, says Jesus shouldn't touch her. Jesus tells him a little story. Guy has two people that are in debt to him. He forgives a little debt, 50 denarii, and then forgives a big debt, 500. Which one will love him more? The Pharisee that says, the one that is forgiven more. And Jesus says, yes. And then he turns to this woman. Her sins, though they are many. That's the phrase. Her sins, though they are many, are forgiven. My sins, though they are many, though they are deep, your sins are forgiven. And the way that we put this into practice is actually by love. We take our wounds and his forgiveness and we turn them into love. So today, give the gift of love. No more condemnation. Find one person that you can love today and do it in an extravagant way. Forgive us our debts as we forgive. Thanks for joining us. At Become New, we want to grow spiritually one day at a time, but it's tough to do that alone. So we're offering a little more support for anyone who would like to work on putting the content into practice. You can sign up to receive a text at the end of each week in this series, asking if you completed the here's how portion for that week. If you want, you can reply to the text and let us know how it went, or if you need prayer in taking those action steps. To sign up for the end of week reminder, just text the word MORE to 855-888-0444 and we'll put you on the list. As always, to receive the emails or video links by text, you can let us know at becomenew.com slash subscribe. If you're already signed up for the emails but aren't getting them, try checking your spam folder or better yet, you can add us to your contact list. 
Our email address is connect at becomenew.com. If you need prayer, we're here for you. Text your specific prayer request to 855-888-0444. There's a team of us who meet each weekday to pray specifically over every person who sends a text in. We'll catch you next time.